Don't worry about the little bits of smoke rolling out. That's fine. Least of my worries. The weather report lied and it's kind of nice. So I'd like to drive this, which means that needs to run. So let's get to it. Look, a radiator and transmission cooler. I gotta make up some L brackets to mount that thing off the original six cylinder hacked up rad support. It's fine for now. The main point was uh, plug those holes so the transmission fluid stays in. I guess we can finally take the hat off the carburetor. It's literally a shower cap. Hmm. Now, the owners actually already run the engine on the frame with a little gas and it fired right up and sounded good. Hasn't pumped fuel yet. And I am missing that adapter fitting back at the tank. So unhook the tank line, hooked up this fella and well, rig that up. Fantastic. Now, before I hotwire it to run it for more than 20 seconds, I would really like a ballast resistor. Hmm. Where do I have any extra ballast resistors? Eh, it's not doing anything. Wait a second. I got options. Good old round bolts. Wow. Too easy. Even though it ran recently, it didn't want to spark at first, but uh, it does now. <laughs> All right. Too easy. Oh, I think the noise is in the generator fans rubbing or bearing or something. Engine sounds great. thirsty because it's only just wiggling. All right. We'll go find some juice. Yeah, it's a little thirsty. My kingdom, the entire thing for a quart of ATF. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Keeping the kingdom. It's not transmission fluid, but if that's what it says it is, I'm gonna be pretty excited. We're moving. We're gonna go very slow because that's all the brakes we have. Yes. Oh yeah, actually that's not bad for a parking brake. No power steering, but that's fine. I'm not worried. Taking our time. The steering. Not hitting a trailer. Not hitting a trailer. Look at that. It drove. Demons on life support again. It's fine. It's just a brand new battery. Sometime today. Yes. Yes. Ha ha. Oh. Well, this will be fun. Yeah, this is just too easy, really. A little more tranny fluid would be good, but hey, it moves. I don't know about you, but I'm impressed and inspired to get this thing actually driving. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's awesome. That's gonna be a sweet ride. All right, 57 Chevrolet wagon. Um, I have to make an electrical system happen. This is the factory harness that goes down to the starter and it's in okay condition, so I'm gonna reuse it. Well, okay. It's not a great condition. I'll probably repair that. Anyway, this is the main voltage supply wire to the car and it goes to starter positive where this battery cable leads. One of these is the trigger from the key switch and one of them should be a full voltage bypass for the coil. 
And I tried testing which one's got power when the ignition is energized, but uh, neither does. So I'm guessing that's not hooked up. Well, obviously it's not hooked up. I haven't hooked it up. Man, life's hard, but it's harder when you're stupid. Oh yeah, here's the view under here without a flashlight. Remind me to invest in lighting. I swear I own a multimeter. If only I could find it. Well, that was short-lived. There's not a whole lot more testing I could do without a key that works. I can't get a key that works without cutting one of these doors and pulling a lock out. <coughs> and I can't pull one of these door panels without uh, the stupid GM clip tool. Or trying really hard not to destroy stuff, which let's just say it's not my strong suit. Well, that just looks wrong. It's off the ground being worked on. Hey, remind me to uh, bring my lift home and set it up and well, yeah, electricity would help too. After walking back and forth across the shop 17 times, I think I finally have all the little things I need for this small wiring project. There, went ahead and restored the harness that goes down to the starter to original factory specifications. By which I mean I replaced one wire, the other one's probably bad, uh, but it's gonna work. Yep, just notice this. Uh, everything in this harness is crispy and definitely a fire hazard. I'm gonna go bang my head against a wall. Well, there's one small but annoying project done. Uh, there, wires are connected to the starter. Oh, I guess I left the headlight switch on. Anyway, now we have power. Good place to start. Still need keys. No, don't lock the keys in the shop again. I gotta get this Chevrolet done or we're gonna lose the shop. And Hulk is gonna smash. I was gonna pull a door panel to get a lockout. You don't have to, it's clipped right there. Interestingly, a 90s Ford is exactly the same. Figure that one out. Yay! 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 That was way too easy. Uh, why no signs of life? Well, now all the power's gone. What did I do? You ever get distracted for an hour making a video about how you're gonna sell everything you own and forget what you were doing? I figured out I'm dumb. And if you unplug the electrical connector from the back of the ignition switch because you were gonna try and jump wires there and make it run, it wipes out electrical to the rest of the car too. Interesting trick, but anyway, look at all these lights we got now. Still missing some up here, but we'll get there. Look at all these signs of life. It even does this. Oh, if I could, yeah. Yeah, I just uh, popped the connector off the back of the ignition switch. That's all I did. Anyway, uh, I guess we can move on now by adding one wire and making it run. Hey, wait a second. The fuel gauge does stuff. Did I forget to plug it in or is the sending unit bad? Apparently on GMs, they peg out like that if it's not hooked up. I learned that on the 61 Cadillac. Do you hear that? Okay, that one doesn't do it, but one of them does. That's something. No. We're learning things. 57 to 64 used a ballast resistor instead of a resistor wire. That's great. I just happen to keep those handy. Well, that's not bad for temporary purposes. All right, I got excited and already tried it, but not bad. And a brake light or two. However many, I don't know. I can't tell from here. These threaded master cylinder caps never want to come off. But I got it. Well, how do you suppose this is going? Well, I already ordered a brake master cylinder. Good thing. Tried to make this one work. It's fine, but we're not driving today. Does the old American gem you just dug out of a field have no working headlights? Before you go throwing bulbs in it, why don't you stomp the dimmer switch about a hundred times? 
usually works for me. Self-healing Chevrolet. Oh yeah, I also learned this. So I guess I can do the shocks now. Ooh, high beams. It's a little bow tie. There. Now we almost always have headlights. Sometimes it just needs a wiggle. I reckon it's time for a sandwich break. Well, that sandwich break lasted for two days. It was delicious. Anyway, let's install this. One funky little special piece mating the frame to the body that uh, we were missing was this. TV kick down valve rod actuator thingy. And I found one on the Ebays. Unfortunately, it's too long. So I took it over to the grinder, shortened the crap out of these ends and the rod itself. And it's still too long, but it is close. Yay! You won't believe this, but we got a brake pedal that does something, guy. Ah, sure, I need to bleed all the brakes end to end, but eh, you know, that's test drive worthy. We might even have power steering. And a mess. We don't have radiator mounting. Guess I should get on that. Okay, we got the old fuel can back in here, except this time we're pumping out into it, not the other way around. I'm gonna try and empty the fuel system of horrible old gas. I hope there isn't very much, but I guess we'll find out the hard way. Yes. You can do it, little pump. Um, I think you can do it. Can you please do it? I don't have all day. Hey, I found the missing hose clamp. Oh yeah, I got distracted by something shiny, but I did connect the fuel tank. Well, this might not work. I know there's gas in it. Huh. Maybe we'll move on to plan B, which is dumping fresh gas in there and saying a prayer. Can you smell this picture? I can't tell if there's not very much in there or if the drain's clogged and I'm kind of afraid to find out which. <sighs> yeah, that smells quite strong. Ugh, I unplugged it. Why is it that color? Does that look like horse urine to anybody else? I promise you it smells a lot worse. Why is it frothy? How much old gas should be in that? Oh, and that. Delightful. The bad news is I'm now very confident that uh, there should be enough fuel in there to pump. So either this thing just really doesn't want to prime itself, which wouldn't be a huge surprise, or there's a blockage. Hmm. The only thing I can smell is zillion year old gas and I cannot find my air nozzle blowy thing. It's gotta be in this mess somewhere. Hey, there it is. Well, after making a bunch of smells, it's a bust on the gas tank. So I'll probably put our friend the five gallon can back up here. I guess drain all the brand new gas back out and um, Anyway, now it's time to wire this uh, generator situation. Apparently, these things don't have a battery stud. They just have field and an armature that go right to the regulator, and the regulator connects to the battery. It would do this through an amp gauge if the car had one. What the heck do I know about generators? Not much, but I know this one's wired now. Oh, I do know I have to polarize the regulator thingy. Now I gotta go look that up again. Kinda hard to tell, but we're definitely charging. Oh, and the belt squeals now because it's got a load on it, so that's a good sign. Nice. And the vein of bad signs, though. Power steering. Well, all the juice came out. Lovely. Ah, charging. Cooling juice is installed. 
fuel system. Just need to mount the radiator and figure out the body mount thing and drive time. Hey, how much oil should be there exactly? Just kidding, just kidding, it's fine. I mean, it is smoking, but it's fine. Follow-up question, how much uh, fire should be in there? How much fluid should leak out of the power steering and how little should it work? Work. <laughs> Whatever. At least you know I'm making radiator mounting brackets. I am a master fabricator after all. Now I have a question. What's that? Didn't look that bad from underneath. This is scabby. Gotta get under there to get that one mount tightened and then do the same on the other side. And then figure out the two funky ones up here. And then finish my brackets. And then whatever else I'm forgetting. It's fine. We'll just put all the mostly new, hopefully not totally terrible gas back in the can. I got real close on this thing. Two body mount bolts and radiator mounts away from driving it out of here. Oh, I hope that's tomorrow. You know, I'm pretty much a master fabricator. Well? Um, it's in there. Turns out uh, the six cylinder crossbar does not fit with the V8 radiator at all. I put it there for moral support. I think today is the day. I even got the TV rod hooked up. Time for a wee little test drive. It's hard enough getting that thing out of that bay. This will be fun. Well, um, it doesn't move anymore, so I guess it needs more training fluid. Do you think the dipstick still showing completely empty could be related? Yeah, by the way, uh, it tends to flood out after it's been running. I think the carburetor needs some love. Anyway. Hey, that's a gear, here we go. Look at that, it drove outside. And with it on the ground, due to the unique construction of the hydraulic ram assist, the power steering actually works. Not sure it still leaks, but it works. Just looks so different out in the world, put together, running, a functional car, give or take. It's got brakes and steering and charging and a fuel system. Well, let's take it for a drive. Just a little one. Don't get too excited. Well, apparently an alignment's on the agenda. And these tires are more than a little flat spotted. Oh, I forgot about the speedometer cable. It's destroyed. That's probably where the transmission fluid went, now that I think of it. Oh, I do wish the temperature gauge worked. That would be an asset. It's got blinkers. Well, blinker. The bulb on the right side's out, but don't worry about that. They even cancel! Too deluxe. Okay, the visibility here leaves a little bit to be desired. It's kind of like having the top chopped. There, I fixed it. By ruining it more. You know what, Brazilian year old junk? This ain't bad. And I don't mean the car's junk. The car's awesome. Other than the floors, it's pretty solid. Yeah, you know, we don't know anything about how long this frame's been sitting or which steering components have been replaced. Or anything, really. So not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, and for the record, I would be going 50 right now, but um, I don't want to slosh all that uh, very expensive gas out of that can under the hood and set the car on fire. So we'll take it easy. Oh, um, there's an exhaust smell. Quite a bit, actually. Ugh. I did notice yesterday there are no door gaskets. I bet there's no hatch gasket either. That would explain it. Nice brake action. I mean, there's still four-wheel drums, so it's not like it's amazing, but hey, it's brakes. We've got a driver. Don't worry about the little bits of smoke rolling out. That's fine. Least of my worries. Look at the little rake. I like it. Yes, we made it to the Wishkaw River Test and Tune Facility. No, we will not be testing the burnout capabilities, but it drove. 
that's a victory. Pretty big one, I think. Took this abandoned body, put it on a Nomad frame, successfully joined the two, and it works. It's not perfect, but it works. And now we're gonna baby it home. It might be overheating. I don't know, no temperature gauge. We'll just take it easy and assume everything's fine. Definitely need to knock the rust off the brakes. They're not amazing, but they work. Transmission shifts nice too. Kitty! Nailed it! What's that? Oh, it's Delton. Look at that beauty. Well, there you go. A uh, running, driving, 57 Chevrolet wagon, which I suppose concludes the project series. Until I have to fix all that other stuff that's still broken. We'll worry about that later. Thanks for watching. Yeah, his is bigger. Just another beautiful day in old car land. Tell you what, suckers, heavy. Second gen can handle it though. I would have driven it across town, just, nah, not yet. Plus the tabs are 20 years old. <laughs>